How you doing? Right, today, street photography in Birmingham. I've, I haven't been to Birmingham for properly for about 30 years. <laughs> I do not know my way around Birmingham at all. So I thought I'd give it a go. A bit of a challenge for me, and I've been frantically researching the best areas around Birmingham I could possibly go for, for, for street photography, and I, 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 I haven't really come up with a plan yet. So I've just got here, dropped the missus off, she's gone shopping. Um, and I'm going to wander around, I'm going to head to Digbeth, which is the first place I'm going to go. Apparently it looks really, really good for graffiti and stuff like that, so that should be a good place to go. Um, I thought I'd run you through my settings first. I've had a few questions uh, about how I take my, how I do my shoot photography. Uh, today I'm, shoot, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T3. I wouldn't normally, I actually prefer, I think, for street photography, the X-Pro2. Um, I, I just really, something about that camera, I really enjoy using it for street photography, but I really love the 23, uh, 23mm Prime. Uh, which is a 35mm equivalent and this is the 1.4 I absolutely I love this lens and it fits better on the X-T3 than it does the X-Pro2 plus I love the EVF on here um, so settings wise I'm just going to I've set the camera up that if I need to go auto ISO um, the shutter won't go below 1 250th uh, so I'm pretty much going to be on ISO on, sorry on aperture priority uh, I shoot normally between 5.6 and f8 um, and that means I can pre-focus if I need to, so if I'm waiting for somebody to come into a scene. Uh, depth of field is, is important obviously because I want to I give the, the, the whole, all the detail of the image as well. I'm not really looking for shallow depth of field with street photography. So I'm never really, if I can avoid it, going below f4. So 5.6 to f8 is my kind of normal. Uh, and pre-focus, and I use the back button focus then for pre-focusing. Um, ISO is on auto, shutter's on say minimum 250th because if anybody's moving, I want to be able to sh uh, freeze that action. And I've actually changed as well, I don't normally, but I've gone on to continuous shutter. Um, I normally have a single shutter and just go three, two, one, wait for the right moment. Uh, but on the, I actually missed the shot <laughs> a while back and I really regretted not having that. So uh, yeah, continuous low now, so about five frames a second. Um, I always shoot black and white and I always shoot high contrast black and white and the reason is is it allows me to see tone and highlights a lot clearer so uh, crucially with, with street photography I don't tend to like um, the images when they come out looking a bit flat and when the light wasn't particularly good so I refrain from taking them images and to help me find that light I have the same as I'm shooting a wedding I always shoot black and white high contrast so up the blacks and up the highlights just a little bit obviously shooting raw so I can decide whether or not it's going to be black and white or, jape or colour in post processing but it, to help me find that composition to see where the tones are that I really like um, I always shoot black and white high contrast I've had a few questions on um, on, on YouTube as to, as to how I, um, how I, I how I find a composition, and it, it's something that I, I mean I've only ever done street photography about three or four times in my life, so I'm by no means an expert. <laughs> uh, but the way I look at it is I see other other photographers, and what I always like about their work is that. They're always simple. All the images I like are really simple. So there might be a human element in it, but the rest of it is just texture or just an interesting background or just a nice environment or amazing light. Um, it's never a cluttered scene. It's, it's, it, there's always, it's always sort of very, very limited to what's going on in the image and it gives you a focal point. And when you look at the image, you want your, you want your, the, the, your viewer to go, why am I looking at this image? What is it I'm supposed to be looking at? What's definitive? What's clear in this image? So what I always look for is with a harsh light, I always look for nice contrast, nice light, uh, and a single subject if possible. Reflections are great. Uh, frames in a doorway, frames in a building, uh, amazing backgrounds like textures and stuff like that. So those are things I kind of look for. It is similar to street photography, uh, to, sorry, to landscape photography in the way that I feel that my best images for landscape photography are all the ones that are really, really simple and minimalistic. Um, I think the ones where you take a great vista, they, they get the whole thing in, look great. But I think if you zoom in and isolate a subject, for me, they're the better images. And it's, a, it's the same with, with street photography. Um, so we're going to go and have a look, wander around now. I've no idea. I think, I think I'm going in the right direction. Um, I'm going to use Google Maps and find out where on earth to go and hopefully it's not too far. I've got about three or four locations in mind so I'm going to give myself an hour in each location. Um, in fact it's been fantastic, I literally parked the car, went round the corner and on the corner there was some really nice lights with these really really nice railings, um, sorry shutters and I just waited for somebody to pre-focus on the corner at 5.6 at 2.50 per second. Um, and obviously with a high contrast you could see the tones. I went for I think two girls or somebody came into the scene there and I grabbed that shot straight away. So I hadn't even started the vlog, I literally just sort of got the camera out and put the, put the GoPro on the top. So I'll show you that image now. Uh, but it worked well. And then I met these cracking lads. It turns out they look really funky. I asked them directions and um, they're really, really funky looking lads. So I said, look, have you got five minutes? Have you, have you got spare 30 cents for a photo shoot? And they were well up for it. So I got some good shots of them as well. Um, yeah, hopefully it's going to go, going to be a good day. A challenging day because I do not know where to go, but it should be a good laugh. And and uh, let's get cracking, I'll see you in a minute. So I'm 
really have spotted this corner on the end of the NCP car park in Birmingham. I only just got here actually. And um, I really like that light that's on the corner of the building. And you've got these awesome lines on the fences, sorry, on the shutters either side. Um, and it's quite nice because as people walk around there, as soon as you, so if you meet up at that corner there, as soon as they get to that spot, you pre-focus on the path there. I'm at f5.6 and the shutter is uh, 160th. ISO is on auto, which has given me an ISO of 500. Um, it's given me nice, nice contrast on the dark area there and there. So when they get to that bit there, as long as you meet up at that light area there, there's quite a lot of people walk around this corner, so you haven't got to wait very long. And there's really nice turns above it as well, so I think that's quite a nice shot. I've literally done about 100 metres from the last corner of the car park, which is just there. I got to this ever crossing, and I've never seen it before, but there's nice lights in that top corner there on that wall. But you've got these stripes there, and in the zebra crossing here. So I pre-focus, I'm using these lines here as a sort of leading line to when somebody gets to that corner there. Let me see how far back I can go without getting flattened by these cars. Let's go back here. That was good, awesome, well done. Look at those reflections. That's incredible. Got to grab a shot of that now. Oh. Just going to focus on the vertical lines of the John Lewis sign. Make sure they are vertical. All right. So I had a guy email me the other day um, asking how we how we can start basically with street photography and what's the best way he's been out a few times and literally every time he comes back he's not happy with any of his images and that probably would have been exactly the same for me when I first started um, because I'd seen other other photographers work and I, I kind of looked at the images and thought what do I like about them photographs and it was always a case of I, I really appreciate that I love the simple aspect to them um, I love the framing I love the composition I love the way that he'd, they'd included lead, leading lines um, reflections and a nice tone and shade and stuff like that so basically the best thing to do is to give yourself a challenge and just go out with one aspect so find a photograph you like and think well what is it about the photograph that, I, that you like and then when you go out look for those those aspects around you so if it's if it's shade or composition or I mean I'm in a tunnel right now so you're gonna get some really nice harsh lights on either side of the tunnel you're gonna get nice textures in the walls so whatever it is when you go out looking for when you when you're trying your street shoots, you're better off just giving yourself one challenge, one aspect that you that you want to try and get. Um, if it's textures or lines or lighting or tone or just keep it simple, because that way you you've got more chance of just finding that shot. You 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 train your mind to look for those compositions, and uh, that's definitely I mean, that's kind of what I do. Like today, I've got a few ideas that I want to try and get, so I'm looking for those compositions already, and I don't even I can't even see them yet, but I'm looking for them. So. If I come across anything that resembles them, that kind of challenge, I've got more of a chance of finding it. Whereas if I just went out and sprayed and prayed, I'd have no chance to come back and think, eh, I don't really like that, don't really like that. I wish I'd concentrated more on the challenge that I'd give myself. So it's definitely, especially when you don't know an area, because I mean, you can go anywhere in the world and look for textures, can't you? Um, that's kind of what I'm doing today. <laughs> That's it. I tell you what's funny, you've got like a pair of lips in the middle of your head. <laughs> I really like it. Let me just look and see if I can see. If you go to her now, as if you're, as if you're going in the kisser, because I quite like the lips there now. <laughs> I love the lips in the background. <laughs> So this is a walkway that goes into Selfridges, I think. I think. Pre-focus. I don't think that's 
That was quite right, but I need one person to come around that bend. I don't really want the typical shot is having selfishes there like that. Well, I just think that's a bit cluttered. I'm not sure if I even like the building. I think it's, it's interesting, but I'm not sure I like it. But I just had one person in this tunnel using that line on the top. One of the suppliers, mate. Just had one person at the end of basically around the, as far around that corner as you go. <laughs> Would be ideal. So I'm just going to pre-focus on that corner and wait. So the shot I want is from about here. Yeah, that girl, oh, might have just got that. I think I'm a bit too far away though with it. I'd rather the person was walking towards me, but these lines going right around to there. This is Selfridge, so the other oh, that's all right. Oh, he's eating his box of donuts as well. <laughs> Get the ceiling up there like that and pre-focus in the bottom corner. So I put my subjects in the bottom right third. This guy's going to be in there, might be bang on. Let's see, probably this down yeah. He would have been banging on if people weren't behind him. Oh. That's hilarious. ask me why someone's drawing me to the mailbox so I'm just about to walk in there I don't even know I think it's restaurants and stuff but it's a very modern building hopefully it'd be really cool and quirky inside but quite struggling with Birmingham actually with especially with architecture because I mean it'd be helpful if I knew where on earth I was going met some really really friendly people so that's going well but yeah have a look in mailbox and then there's a hotel around here as well uh, which is supposed to be really really awesome so I'm gonna pop in there as well see what we can see That is some backdrop. Look at this. Just need somebody to walk. Nice lines in the floor as well. Pre-focus there just in case somebody does. I'm at F4 now. Them lines as a backdrop are fantastic. But I only want one person. I keep getting groups go past. But um, yeah, I'm down to F4, 200 per second, because obviously the depth of field isn't that important as long as they're about in that area. 23 mil width is a bit of a tight uh, aspect, but um, Hopefully we'll get a single person walk just before the line, I think just to the left or just to the right, either or. Either or. Oh, it's a bit frustrating. I didn't get the shot I wanted in there. It's an amazing place. Got to be the poshest apartment store I've ever been in, but I could not get the shot. I didn't want to stand around too long because there was a couple of security guys that were eyeing me up wondering who was going to take it in turns to come and ask me to move. I thought I'd get out of their way. Um, but yeah, I might try again on the way back. So I'm going to wander around to this hotel now, see what else is in the area. So I've just walked through the square, which has got a giant Christmas tree in here at the minute, so that's not going to work. But on the way out to the canal, it's part of this, you probably can't see it because the GoPro is overexposing. There's a nice reflection on the glass of the restaurant just before it. Now focus, so pre focus on that pillar at 5.6. I don't know what's going to happen now, but that. got to be nearly sunset time. I'm going to have long left before. I might keep an eye out for some interesting light. Um, I might head back as well to get the, um, the Harvey Nichols photograph I couldn't get a minute ago. Um, it's a shame because the wind's picked up a little bit now, so all the reflections and the canal's gone. And the light's gone horrible as well. Um, but yeah, so uh, head back to Harvey Nichols. Try that shot one more time. Um, I really, really want to get that shot. And then if that doesn't work, I don't know. That's <laughs> in a second. So I'm in Grand Central Station. And the light's pretty much gone outside, so I've got to come in here and see what it's like inside, but the light in here is dreadful. But I really like this floor. And I've pre-focused on the floor at F2.8, which is at 1 60th per second, giving me 1600 ISO. And I'm just waiting for somebody to come on their own, really, on that top third. Um, I, don't think the, I don't think the shadow is going to be particularly nice, but it's worth a shot. That is me 
done. It's been a really good day. Quite quite challenging Birmingham actually because I don't know the area at all. Um, I, I really I had a few ideas of places I wanted to go to, um, but I, I did struggle because a lot of the time it was really flipping busy. Um, and when I when I wanted to try and isolate a photograph with just one subject, it just it was it was a challenge at times. Uh, so I did wait around quite a bit more than I would normally, but it's been good fun. It's been a good challenge. Great to see Birmingham. And on, on this occasion, I think it's good to get an idea of what stuff looks good. And I think give it a, a couple of weeks when the when the decorations are down, and uh, there'll be quite a few uh, opportunities here to get some good good street photographs. Um, I did really enjoy it. Met some amazing people. Got some good photographs, I think. Uh, I don't think I got anything that I was particularly proud of. And you know, jumping up and down about. Um, but fingers crossed, I mean, it was, it was a nice, I set myself a couple of challenges. I wanted to work with people a bit more today, so I wanted to approach people, um, take a few sort of street snaps and that sort of thing with people and sort of speak to people as well. So as opposed to just candid stuff. And uh, yeah, met a group, of, a, a couple of people and had a, had, a, had a bit of a laugh with them as well. So that was a good laugh. As I say, if you're interested in starting uh, street photography, the easiest thing to do is to give you, yourself one challenge or one subject, like reflections or colour. Colour's a good idea because you can look, walk around looking for red, <laughs> or you can walk around you can walk around looking for blue or yellow, or whatever, and just do a whole theme based on the colour. Or if you're looking for reflections or whatever, so if you're, if, instead of co complicating everything, just uh, go out and just take. Just focus on that one subject, and like if it's reflection or if it's tone or um, in black and white really does help obviously not shooting colour but black and white really does help sort of isolate a, a photograph and, and look at the contrast and all the detail and stuff like that but for me what I enjoy in the photographs I enjoy are the high key the high the good the nice light the nice contrast the images black and white uh, really strong but simple simple images I don't like it when there's too much clutter going on around it um, and I think that's basically if I can capture a photograph isolate the scene those are that's pretty much my favorites that's the sort of photo I normally go out to get is the simple com uh, simple composition nice lines nice strong contrast um, yeah that, that that's probably the easiest way of starting it but um, I hope you enjoyed the video I mean it's, it's been difficult again to, to sort of talk to the camera and, and film there's been a load of opportunities of scene photos I wanted to take uh, and the light's been rubbish or there's been Christmas decorations or whatever but uh, you never know I'll try uh, try another city again soon but thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the like the thumbs up button as well drop me a comment if you have any tips or if you've got any uh, questions on street photography please feel free to ask um but no as for shooting with the xt3 really really enjoyed it um and yeah i, I think i prefer the x pro 2 still for street photography it's something about uh, something about that camera but uh, it was good fun anyway um but anyway i hope you enjoyed the images thanks so much have a great new year and i'll see you again soon just watching take care